Hello everyone, Kerry the Craft here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And today I'm here with, I wouldn't say requested, but a multi-questioned multi topic. And I thought the best way to answer it is just to show you. Um, as you know, I do gel printing, mono printing. I work with gel press plates. I don't believe I own any other brand. I've had gel plates for quite some time. We're talking several years. I look after my gel plates. Um, everything I'm going to show you is probably not rocket science and probably I'm not the first person to do this. Um, I have got a couple of techniques that I've always done. There is another technique which I learned from Patricia at PM Artist Studio, which I now embrace and like. We will talk to them as I go along around. So people have asked me, how many gel plates do you own? Oh, we're going to find out because I don't actually know. Um, how do you store them? That will become apparent when I actually show you the gel plate prints, uh, gel plates. And how do you maintain and condition your gel print uh, plates that will also deal with as we go along. So first things first, as you've probably known by a previous video, I keep my gel plates in these. Now I'm going to link the video to these boxes in the description below, link the video to that because I'm not going to go over it time and time again. So when I store my gel plates, they stay in these. I always put them in with a piece of paper underneath and a piece of paper on top. There is a reason for that. If I put them directly onto the plastic and they trap an air bubble underneath, that air bubble could leave a mark within your gel plate. And over time, it may come out, but to be honest, it may not. If you've got some really big creases or folds in your paper, do yourself a favor, just change the paper. Because again, if there was a fold, and I mean these these aren't these aren't problem folds, but if there was a real big fold in this, it could transfer to the gel plate itself and leave a mark. Okay, now I found because every time I use these, they come out of the box. I keep an eye on the condition of the paper, and this is just copier paper or it's thin paper. And I've, I've only ever used copier paper or thin paper. This is, I don't even know what brand it is. It's just, I must have had a 12 by 12 pad at some point, or I must have had bigger pieces of paper and put it down. They're just general paper that I don't mind. I don't mind throwing away periodically. If it becomes stained or marked, I don't mind that either. I'll explain why as we go along. So this is my 12 by 12, possibly my most popular plate. It's the one I probably use most of the time. Right, next plates. Let's see what's in this box. Now, um, I store my gel plates sitting on a shelf in this direction. The only one I've ever stood up on its end was the 12 by 12, and that is because the 12 by 12 gel plate fits almost perfectly into the box. Therefore, it's not moving around. If I was to saw something like this on its side, these could all move against each other and I'd rather not them buckling. So let's see what we've got here. Right. Um, this is my five by seven. Now you can see by the staining on this, I've had this. In fact, I think this was my very first gel plate and I'm still using it and it's years old. Um, last Christmas, I was very lucky enough to be given a brand new five by seven. Haven't got around to using that yet. So as you can see, it's in pristine condition. I will explain how they come when you first see them when I get to the last set of gel plates. Um, this is a little oval gel plate. I have no idea where I got it from. I've had it years. I would say I probably got this when I first started playing with gel plates. Um, but I don't know what brand. I don't know where it's from. It's not incredibly good. It's very thin. Um, it does the job if I need it to do the job. As you can see, I've just kept it in a fold of paper. What's this one? Oh, this is a rectangular one. Again, not the greatest. I don't know where I got these from, guys. Um, I ordered them on eBay, possibly, or even Amazon. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where they're from. And then this one's a bit thicker. So this is a rectangular one. Um, what would be the size of this one, actually? Because this might be a conventional one. Okay, that's three, three by five. Don't know where that came from, but to be honest with you, 
that looking at that that could be a gel press one gel press are the brand i normally use um just because they've never let me down and i like the quality of them so we might come back and visit this dirty plate when it comes around to cleaning and conditioning next on my list right this was what is this one right let's see right this has had some action so this is eight and a half by 12. I would say this was probably sold as a nine by 12, but as you can see, they're not always true to their measurements. Okay, so just be aware, if you're buying them for a specific project, I would say buy them slightly bigger than, than what you require. Now, actually you can see under there, see there's a piece of debris, so I'll move that close. See, there's a bit of debris trapped under there. I've obviously missed that bit of debris. And that debris there has now left a little tiny dent in my gel plate. Now, over time, it could work its way out. Um, but that's the sort of thing you need to look for. I, I was a bit lazy about finding that. So again, um, one of my gel plates, another one. I tend to use this one for me. Um, when I'm doing British A4 sizes for things like journal pages, because our journal pages, I believe, are, ooh, I'll say eight and a half by 11 and a quarter or something. I can't remember off the top of my head. So I would use it in this orientation, and this would be how I do my journal pages if I'm printing on them. Right, another one. I hope you're keeping count because I'm not. Um, what's this one? This is a smaller plate. So this one is... Again, it was supposed to be eight, but you can see it's it's not exactly eight. Now, some people will say, oh, they shrink over time. I don't believe that at all. Mine have never really shrunk. They've distorted slightly. So this is an eight by 10 or supposedly an eight by 10. So as you can see, it's all in here, not marked. Again, this was just regular copier paper that this is on. This feels a little dry. If your plates feel dry and not sticky, that's usually an indication that they probably need conditioning. Now, you might be able to see on this paper, it looks a bit discolored. That's because this has been conditioned and the paper is leaching a little bit of the oil out of the gel plate. So, so that's why it's slightly discolored. Am I worried? No, because the oil is still in the paper, so therefore it's not leaching any more out. Okay, on to the last, last couple now. I don't remember what these are. So these are obviously the bottom of the pile. Now I've got a feeling, in fact I know, um, I was part of an eBay auction for a gel plate a while back and when the gel plate arrived it was obvious why it was in an auction because the gel plate was damaged. So what I did is I actually cut a gel plate down and I made these into, what are these? four and a quarter by by eight now i don't i wouldn't really recommend cutting gel plates down gel plates are quite an investment in money and if you mess it up you've destroyed the plate the only one i cut down was this one and i cut it down because it was already damaged and I didn't mind taking taking the chance that I would damage it further. Um, as it is, I ended up with two unique sizes. I think my camera may have just jumped. We'll have a go at that again. So these are the three others I had for Christmas. They came as part of a set. Um, they're brand new, not used them yet. So this is a three inch round. This is a three inch square. And I think if you measure this from the peak to the top, it's two and a half inches. From point to point, it's two and three quarter inches. But these are the ones that are brand new. Now, when your gel plates arrive, it's going to be in what's called a clamshell case, which means it's a plastic case that clicks back together. It's really good to keep the gel plates in there, but you will find over time and use, sometimes those plates begin to break and shatter and chip. Um, which is why I transfer mine to these boxes. But when you first get your gel plates, they're going to have this plastic on either side. The moment you take it off, don't ever put it back on again. And because the thing is, the way this was manufactured, it's absolutely sealed 
to the surface so there's no air bubbles underneath it. The moment you lift this off, you're likely to get air bubbles underneath it. And if you've got an air bubble, if you've got an air bubble underneath, as I previously said, you might make a divot or um, an impression. Some people will take one side off and leave the other side on so this is pristine for future use, but then put a piece of paper over the top of this when you store it. So hopefully that gives you all of my gel plates so as far as a gel plate count goes that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve oh the lucky 13. there you go so there's 13 gel plates i use probably my most popular are my 12 by 12 my 5 by 7. so we talked about storage we've talked about um, when they first arrive, let's find one that I actually want to now clean and condition. Actually, let's pull out the 12 by 12. And I think that one of the 5 by 7s was looking pretty, that's in need of a look at. So let's move these to one side. So I, how often do I... Um, clean my plates. Okay, there are people out there who never clean their plates. They like to let the build up of paint on their plate or inks and they do that purely because it gives them some very interesting effects um, when they pull off they get grunge around the side. Um, I'm a bit of a neat and tidy person and I've, I've not done that. It doesn't work for me um, and I'm also of the mind that if I've got crusted stuff on here and then I'm not using the plate, is that crusted stuff leaving marks on my plate? So there's not a wrong, there's not a right, there's your own personal way to do it. Now, um, cleaning a plate can be done in a couple of different ways. Yeah, this isn't sticky enough. Um, in a couple of different ways. When I finish working with a gel print, a gel plate, I will usually take just a damp, I've got a damp face cloth, this isn't dirty, it's just stained, and I will just wipe the gel plate just to take off the excess paint, and then I'll store it. Um, I gel plate probably two or three times a week, so I'd say probably once a month, I'll give my plate, the plate which is normally this one and this one, which I use the most, I will give them a thorough cleaning and a good conditioning. Now, if you look at... Um, the companies that produce the gel plates, they normally say, don't condition your plate. Um, I've had this years. I, I can't even remember how long I've had this. And I think it's only in such good condition because I do look yeah. after it. To yeah. thoroughly clean my plates, what I'll do is there's always bits around the edges of your gel plates. Okay, there's always, there's always stuff that gathers on these edges. Okay, you want to make sure it's not building up too much because if it builds up too much, that's where your painted papers are gonna grip and possibly tear. Packing tape is what I use. This is from my Dollar Tree, Pound Store, whatever you wish to call it. I literally put it down, rub it on, and as you lift it off, as you can see, it lifts it all off. So the first part of my cleaning process when I'm treating my gel plates is I go around every single edge, I try to use the same piece of tape as often as I can until it's no longer pulling anything off its plate. So I don't mind. I, a roll of packing tape is a lot cheaper than a brand new plate. Now, what I do on one side, I would also do on the other. I'm only going to do one side, but know that once I've completed the process, I would normally turn the plate over and do the same on the other So, As you can see, all of that was hanging around on my plate. Sometimes I'll go across the body of the plate as well, just if there's any bits of grit or grime in there. Like, I can see there's a little bit of grit on the other side of there. Might just be a crumb of paint. Actually, it's attached to the paper, it's not attached to the plate. Equally as bad, but there you go, so that's that. And then if I look at the 5x7 one, Let's get a clean piece of tape. Let's put that over there. It's stuck to my fingers. So this 5x7 is even older than my 12x12. 12 12. Um, as I said, this, is, this was my beginning plate. 
and to this very day it's probably still one of my most useful plates. I would recommend anyone who's planning to have a go at gel printing start with 5x7. You can do postcards, you can do big backgrounds, just do it in patches. You can do journal cards, journal tags, bookmarks. You can do tissue papers, you can do texture papers, you can do ink techniques, all on here. Because how often do you really need a 12x12 12 12 background? If you're into card making, this is perfect. If you want to make your own labels, do your print on here, cut it into label sizes. I find this an incredibly useful size, and as a lot of you will attest to, I will fully recommend buying 5x7 as your first gel plate. Then, as you become a little bit proficient with it, there is another reason, if you're using a 5x7, you'll use a heck of a lot less paint, or should I say waste paint practicing, than you would on a larger one. So, um, so yes, 5x7 five, uh, five is my favourite and the one I would definitely recommend for someone who's just beginning. Now, that's pretty much what I do to clean my plate is I will actually go around the edges, clean off all the gunk because you can see it's gone now. And on this one, even though it's a tired old gel plate, it's pretty much gone on here and I would then flip this over and do the other side. Now, partly cleaning and conditioning is done with a mineral oil. Now, for years, I used Johnson & Johnson's baby oil. It's pure, it's gentle, it's not going to harm my plates. Um, I always use this just, just, I want to say feed the plate, because I find I get better results and easier pulls if I've conditioned a plate. Now, a couple of years ago, was it a couple of years ago? Maybe a couple of years ago, I started watching Pierre Martis Studios, at studio and Patricia, who's the ex art teacher and the P and the B and M of Artist Studio, actually recommended that she liked using cutting board mineral oil because basically Patricia doesn't like the smell of this and this has a nice citrus smell to it. I would say if you're going to use any mineral oil, use one that's made for cutting boards, or you can in some countries buy mineral oil as. Um, something from a pharmacy that they would recommend as almost a laxative but I've always found Johnson Johnson's baby oil readily available this is quite inexpensive this is not but I did want to try this I wanted to see what the difference was between the two to be honest as far as I'm concerned the only difference is price and smell um I like this because it smells good. This does exactly the same job. So I'm going to stick with Johnson & Johnson for this one purely because there's no reason not to. And you're more likely to find this around the world than you are trying to find this on the internet and then having to order it. Um, but again, if you've got a good kitchenware shop and they sell mineral oil for conditioning chopping boards and wooden bowls and stuff like that, that's the mineral oil you want. So let's see if I can open this up. So... I come on, now I've got the little squeezy thing on the top, so I'm going to do both of them because they need doing. I will give a reasonably liberal amount of oil and then I'll just use my hands and I will massage it in. Don't go wild rubbing it because you'll splatter oil all over the place, which wastes the oil. And I just work it out to the edges of my gel plate, making sure that it's got a nice coverage. It's quite a therapeutic thing to be doing, I must admit. I don't know that it's because of the tactile nature of it. So once it's on there, I give it a reasonably good massage in, and then I will leave this sit for a few minutes. Now, if you weren't watching, what I would do is I would actually massage this into the plate, and then I'd go away and have a cup of coffee and come back. Probably about 15 or 20 minutes later, I'd go to the next stage, and you would find that in that time, some of this is actually absorbed into the plate. Let's just put the lid on this. Now, if you've got more than one plate on the go that you actually want to condition, you can always pick up the other plate and lay it on top and pick up any excess, but I like to let just let it sit. We're not going to let it sit now because it would be worse than watching paint dry. So once I've mass massaged that into the plates, I then get kitchen paper. This is what I call kitchen paper. Some people call it paper towel. Depends on what you want. I tend to not use baby wipes because baby wipes 
have something in them, whether it's a water, whether it's um, an oil of itself. I like these. Um, they, they're recyclable. I like this. So once I've done this, it's sat for, say, 15 or 20 minutes. I'll come in and I will just wipe off the excess. And see, we didn't realise that much dirt was on there, did we? And that's the whole joy because there's such a thin film of colour on here that I wouldn't actually know it was on here, but it may affect the prints I make from it. Now, see, we're still getting it off there. Um, if you're someone who likes to use inks on your gel plate, just be aware the inks are likely to stain your gel plate and they will not come out. But see, I'm still getting this. I couldn't... This is well overdue for cleaning, this one. I'm glad I'm making this video today. And there's me thinking my colours were getting dull. It wasn't, it's just... I mean, look at all this I'm pulling off here. But what this has done is it's actually soaked into the surface of this gel plate and made it all nice and... Um, it's feeding it. So let's put that one up the top. So this one here, now this one hasn't been cleaned for quite a while. I've been quite lazy with this one. So as I was saying, if you're using um, inks, don't expect all of the colour to come back out. It's probably not like, oh, it's a lot cleaner than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's probably not going to come out completely. Now, another reason I like to leave them on their pieces of paper when I'm cleaning is because you can see I can hold the paper. If you're actually trying to do baby oil or mineral oil onto a gel plate with no way of holding it, it's like trying to grip a wet fish. The thing's going to slide and slip all over the place and, and it causes problems and frustration. And half the time it'll probably flip out. Oh, there was green on there. There you go. Flip out of your hand and land on the floor and then you've got to clean all the fibres of the carpet or the floor off. So, let's say I've done those. So my next stage would be, is I'd put a piece of paper on it. I'd flip it over. I take that off and then I'd do exactly the same to the other side. So I'd just take off the excess there. I would do the same on the other side. If there's a little bit of oil on here, what's the worst it can do? It can get sucked into the plate, not a problem. Again, likewise with this one, I would flip it over. Flip it over take this side off and then give this side a good clean the same as it did before. Now once they're all done they just go back into their plastic containers and they're ready to be used the next time. I particularly don't mind the smell of Johnson's baby oil. I've sort of got used to it over the years but this is a nicer one that it does smell really fresh and lemony um, but to be honest with you I don't mind either. So that's how I would clean any of my plates. That's actually how I would condition any of my plates. Um, I can't think there's anything else you need to know really. Um, a couple of rules of thumb with the gel plate. Sorry, I'm just wiping my hands off. A couple of rules of thumb with the gel plate. Um, never use a sharp object on it. Um, I, If you want to pick anything up, I would use a plastic tool rather than a metal tool. Um, a lot of the time I can just press down and then put my fingernail under whatever's on there. Just treat them with respect and they will they will really, really look after you. Um, something I have noticed over the years, let's pull this off again, is this started out as a 12 by 12 plate. Is it still a 12 by 12 plate? Right. Near enough. Near enough. The trouble is that over the time, it's actually distorted slightly so it's never fully square. Right, let's talk about one more thing before I say goodbye to you and that is how do I use them? So I've got sheets of plexiglass. Now I bought mine on the internet. I believe they were meant to be for um, plexiglass windows like double glazing windows or something and I ordered them. There were companies on eBay that I could actually order the from cut to size but I did find quite a few of them already cut to size and sometimes if you go to a thrift store or a charity shop you will find that there are possibly clip frames for pictures and they've got acrylic in them instead of glass. I preferably don't use glass. Um, 
I'm pressing down on my plate, I'm picking it up and down. Uh, you can have a really nasty accident if you're using glass, but that's your personal choice. If you find you've got two thin pieces of acrylic, um, someone suggested, and it was a brilliant suggestion, um, glue them together. So what I would do is I put a couple of lines of double-sided tape down, put the other one on top, and they'd be stuck together, and then the laminated would be a lot firmer than just the one. I have questions about these rubber dots. They're non-slip dots. I got them in my pound store. They're just meant to be for under pieces of stuff on countertops that um, the little ones I just cut into four because I didn't want the round sticking out on the sides. I do actually like having this one. Pity it's not in the middle. That always bothers me. But when I'm actually brayering paint on here, if I want a really thin layer, if I can see that dot, I know I've got a really thin layer. So to use these, all I do is I take the paper off my 12 by 12. I flip it over and I'll lay it down and then what I do is I lift up the corners to get the majority of the air bubbles out from underneath it. I've never successfully got them all out but as my gel plates don't live on the acrylic plate those little bits of air bubbles while I work doesn't really bother me at all. Something else to look for, let's see if I can reach it. Okay, for my 5x7, which is this size, this was actually, um, what's it called? It was uh, an embossing plate for a big shop embossing thing. You buy two pieces at a time. You sandwich your dies or your embossing things through it. I, I ordered a new set. I only needed one and ended up using this for my 5x7, and it was perfect for it. I do know some people have picked up clear... Um, chopping boards as well um, for countertops they've used those so that's kind of covered everything I think guys I can't if I've missed anything I apologize but I think that's absolutely everything I know or I do with my gel plates um, I'm not going to go into equipment because you will see that in any videos I do but hopefully that all asked answered all the inquiries about what plates have you got what sizes are they um, how do you clean them? How do you condition them? How do you store them? How do you stack them? How do you look after them? That, I believe, has answered everything. So hopefully you found that useful. For those of you who have actually been asking for that, so I just want to clean up this oil a bit. Well, it, I can see it because I'll forget it's there later. Um, so hopefully that's answered everything for you. Very pleased to help out, guys. If you ever have questions, let me know if I can answer them in a comment. I will do if there's a reoccurring question I will usually make a video to answer that because then everyone gets notified of the video and that's more than likely to answer more people's questions than just them happening upon the answer that I give to a comment so that's enough of me talking I think so I'm Kerry the Crafter that's C-E-R-I until next time bye bye now